me and Molly just managed to get away with going to Copenhagen for four nights and only spending 50 quid each and here's how. First tip is to not get any Copenhagen guide but don't watch any videos and I'm specifically thinking about you Vaga Brothers Copenhagen on a budget videos. All these sources of information say go shopping, go buy some of the local food but that is totally not part of a budget trip. I mean I don't think I've seen a single Copenhagen on a budget video that didn't say you have to buy this like half open sandwich thing that they sell for a tenner each and you know nobody wants to spend the tenner on a snack it's just ridiculous i'm just saying don't give into the shopping craze it is supposed to be like one of the best shopping cities in the world but i mean that's not what you're there for just because the guidebook says you have to spend loads of money doesn't mean you have to my second tip is another thing you should never do don't buy the copenhagen card 72 hours for 80 quid okay well <laughs> if you're trying to do three days for a total of 50 quid budget then you're spending 80 quid on this pass and you can't even like feed yourself the, you can justify the price but if you go to like four museums a day but I don't think anybody's really gonna enjoy that like okay so we spent all this money on the past now we have to go to the Carlsberg Museum in the morning and this and that and this and that all day just to get the most out of it and the thing about the discount on restaurants is like you can't afford to eat in a restaurant anyway if you're going on a budget so that's just irrelevant my third tip since you're not buying the Copenhagen pass but you are buying individual travel passes is to do just a little bit of research and figure out what things you can and can't do based on the travel pass you're buying so we were very careful to group days where we needed public transport and days where we could walk to everything we wanted to do to minimize the amount of transport passes you need to buy there were things like we wanted to go to Dyer Haven but that, is, that just goes through so many zones um, that it would a travel pass there would just eat up so much of our budget that we ended up eliminating it. And that's how ruthless you have to be in such an expensive city. And the travel passes aren't cheap either, which really doesn't help. Copenhagen was probably the place in Scandinavia that we struggled the most with scrimping and cutting back. My fourth tip is something else to cut out of the guidebook. Reject all the expensive attractions. I mean, stuff like that happens all over the world. You're not going to miss it. Um, the things that you really are going to enjoy, the things that are more unique to Copenhagen, and they're free. I mean, if if you went to the Tivoli Gardens, the Aquarium, the Carlsberg Museum, the National Museum, and the Copenhagen Zoo, that's over 100 quid, and we were trying to do the city on 50 quid. So, you know, you can't be spending 100 quid on, uh, on attraction admissions, or, you know, 80 quid to get in for free with a pass. And the things that you should do while you're there, the things that we did while we were there. We saw the Little Mermaid, we saw the Citadel, we went up the Round Tower, we went to Christiania, where the, we have quite a good story from that's part of the vlogs. Um, we went to Nyhaven and we were lucky while we were there that the jazz festival was on, so we saw a lot of jazz music out in the streets for free, which was great. Definitely recommend planning your trip to go around the jazz festival. Um, but my point is that all those things I just mentioned, all those attractions, came to a total of three quid instead of a hundred and you still fill your days doing awesome, memorable, uniquely Danish stuff instead of just like museums and things. My fifth tip is something to do in Denmark for free that is so good it warranted its own section in this video. Go and see the elephants from the Copenhagen Zoo. If you make it there soon, I mean I don't know how quickly elephants grow up, but if you make it there soon you can see a really cute baby elephant or calf or whatever um, for absolutely free and its parents are just stunning. The baby is so cute. There's a park in Copenhagen where at the back there's a whole viewing section to see into the Copenhagen Zoo and I mean when we were there the elephants came right up to us and it was just incredible. It was the thing that we couldn't stop talking about when we came back to the UK because it was so, so unforgettable. I scoured YouTube for Copenhagen on a budget videos and nobody mentioned it. For absolutely free, you can see the most impressive thing in the biggest zoo in Denmark. It's just ridiculous how nobody talks about this. My sixth tip is to cook for yourself. Me and Molly were really careful to get an apartment with a kitchen. And as it happened when we got there, we were just across the road from a Lidl, so we were able to feed ourselves so, so cheaply. You wouldn't probably get a meal in a restaurant in Copenhagen for less than like 20 to 25 quid, and we didn't even spend that much in Lidl each, and we ate so, so well. That's the best thing that you can do to save money is to cook for yourself. You're not there for some local dish, especially if you're on like a backpacker's budget like we were. My seventh and final thing is something that will serve you well anywhere in the world is to get a card called Monzo and it's not sponsored, I'm sure there's others, blah, 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 blah. But this card, Monzo, you top it up um, through an app on your phone and then you can spend money on it contactless or chip and pin wherever you are in the world and it will just work out the best possible exchange rate whenever you use it to pay somewhere. So top it up in pounds or whatever your local currency is and you can spend it anywhere in the world, no commission, no fees, no anything. So imagine how much money you'd save by not going to the post office every time you went on holiday and paying them and then even paying them to transfer the stuff that you bring back from your holiday back into your local currency. 
and, and especially on a trip like this where we were in a few countries with a unique currency it means we didn't have to budget like this many Swedish kroner, this many Danish kroner I mean we were roughly trying to spend 50 quid per country but just in case of emergencies I mean we could just instantly have more kroner wherever we were for free and you don't have to worry about not being able to spend it when you get home because you can just spend it in pounds as well so those are the things that I think saved us the most money on this trip please 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 comment with more if you have some because what really really wound me up is that all the reading I did and nobody mentioned half the cool stuff you can do for free in Copenhagen it's nobody mentioned that you can go see like a family with a really cute little baby elephant for free everyone was like oh well why don't you just spend half your budget on going to I don't know the Carlsberg Museum or something which I definitely do not want to do if you want to see any more stories from our time in Scandinavia I'll link uh, to the full series of vlogs and also to other videos I've done for doing other cities on a really tight budget thank you so much uh, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if you like this video if it helped you and I'll see you next time